we're back here on the bonus round from Treyarch going behind the design on Black Ops 2. I'm here with Mark Lamia, Dan Bunting, and Jimmy Zielinski to talk about all things BLOPS 2, right? Or what, what is the uh, correct acronym for this game? For you, Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2, there's no. <laughs> isn't, there, don't you, isn't there some shorthand? BO2, BLOPS 2? It's Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2. All right, fair enough. Now let's get to the single player campaign of Black Ops 2 and what you guys uh, wanted to do with this. So obviously there are a lot of big ideas that you brought here, not just going to the future, but you know, the branching storyline and uh, you know, the Strike Force missions, big ideas. But when you first started on this a couple of years ago, what were the ideas and how have those changed over the past two years? You know, um, I remember having some of my first conversations with Dave Anthony, our, our, our game director, and um, from the very beginning, you know, uh, a lot of these core tenants that you're talking about, yeah. story branching, most memorable villain uh, in a Call of Duty game is what we wanted to create, um, a greater variety of game plan levels, yeah. um, nonlinear structures, uh, more sandbox style gameplay. Yeah. Uh, all these things are things that we aspire to. Now the manifestation of that has gone through <laughs> a lot of different prototyping and iterations and has actually changed over time. But, but really from the very first presentations that, I, that, that we gave to the team and, uh, and to Activision, a lot of these things um, are, were all there from the beginning. You know, right. I mean, I think they were a little difficult, I think, for everyone. I remember, especially when we talked about doing story branching, and when you talk about all the detail that goes into a campaign level and to realize that some of that may or may not be experienced or how you actually create that and hold this whole thing together and make yeah. sure that a player can, can you know, because it's such an intense game, you know, and it's, at times, you know, it's, it's like you're just so immersed in it to have to have so many different moving parts and different, you know, even different styles of gameplay, it was, it was, it was ambitious. But you know, it's really a testament. Um, the team is, is, you know, a seasoned group of vets. Um, we have a lot of great new talent as well. But the leadership on this team has made a number of Call of Duty games together, and uh, they really wanted to go for it. And uh, and really, um, they on, on this game, they really did uh, get a chance. I think to from the very beginning hit upon everything that they really wanted to get in terms of ambition. Like I said, the manifestation of those things and but it's, exactly you know, executed it's, is different It's over controversial time. on a franchise this big, I think, to you know, do anything that is sort of different than the norm. And I'm sure some people said, hey, we, you know, it's Black Ops 2. Was it always yeah. going to be Black Ops 2? Yeah, it was going to be Black Ops 2. But what Black Ops 2 meant to us was pretty much different than what I think Black Ops 2 inside of uh, the organization and even out in the world, I think was something different. And I think that's why we were so excited when we were making it. You know, we felt that actually following a, you know, a successful prior formula was actually a more risky proposition at this right. point in the franchise than branching out, taking some risks and, and executing on, on some fresh and new and innovative ideas that uh, we felt you know, we wanted to make for, right. this, for this game and for the fans. We felt like that was actually, you know, and, and because you know, the team has worked together so well for so long, that puts the risk on us and we're comfortable with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the idea of, 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 of change, we weren't afraid of. It, it, it puts, I'd rather have the risk be with us on execution than, than, than somewhere else, because that's something that we can control. So Dan, from your perspective, I mean, you guys are obviously thinking about you know, what you wanted to do with MP, but single player, some of these ideas, I mean, is everyone at, at Treyarch sort of contributing ideas in the early days about what this game can be? Yeah, in the early days, there's a lot of uh, contributions from all over the team, and I think that um, when you look at kind of w the, different por the different cultures on the team, even within, you know, we, we're a large organization, large studio, um, you know, on the multiplayer side, we do all the weapons development, for example, on right. multiplayer, and um, that has so, to feed into and that campaign. feeds into campaign and yeah. what they do. And um, the, the the culture on the weapons team is they are very, very, um, they're very particular about the details and very particular about the authenticity and the believability, the history of weapons. You know what a weapon looks like and feels like and how it behaves in in the real world versus in the game. Yeah. Um, so that's something that's really close to them. So when we when it came to planning out what are the weapons that we have in, in a future setting then you know they really drove that kind of initiative and said well let's let's start with where we are right now and see where we're going to go in the future and for example um attachments is really you know they're like right now in the world 
the weapons don't change a whole lot in terms of the design of a core weapon. If, if a weapon works really well, it kind of carries through over the course of several years. Right. But the attachments change rapidly. The, the things that you can do, the technology and attachments, right. um, and sort of add-ons to weapons and enhancements to weapons. So that was where they put a lot of energy into kind of creatively breaking out and doing some really interesting things. Well, wow. now, Jimmy, your background is you know doing a lot of the animation, uh, you know, for the for games here at Treyarch and Call of Duty games. The engine, obviously, that this was built on. I mean, this is you know we're getting towards the end of the console generation. You guys are still pushing the uh, you know technology in new ways. But when you were looking at this, I mean, some of the ideas uh, was the team feeling like how far can we push this? I mean, we've already pushed it so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I heard about the original ideas and and kind of how they were going to grow. You know, I was just like, if we can execute on that, that's going to be huge. Yeah. Um, seeing it, having played it now, um, we have. And, you know, it's kind of my first opportunity, having moved to Zombies and, and focusing on that, to actually wait till the game's later in development, actually play it and experience it. So right. my take on it is, you know, going People back to... People at home should be jealous because you played it and it's pretty good. Absolutely. Uh, going, going back to originally hearing about the ideas, like Mark says, um, I mean, these things, you know, came all the way through and a lot of the things got actually yeah. implemented. Um, to a to a high was level. there anything that that didn't make it? Some wild idea that you guys had two years ago that eventually, for whatever reason, you said like, nah, it's like, it's you know too what much, there was too radical. No, you know what there was. There was ideas trying to execute on our vision that right. didn't make it. A good example of that would be uh, one of the early Strike Force prototypes. Right. Had you was a was a it was a you know it was a squad based mechanic and there were, it was a class squad based mechanic uh -huh. and you know there was a you know. Uh, uh, a heavy, you know, heavy, heavy gunner, uh, you know, um, assault rifle guy, a you specialist. You control your squad, and you could, you had the thing where you could move between them, like you could uh -huh. do now. So, right, the base mechanics, yeah. it didn't have any of the of the top down overview, uh -huh. and it was a more linear. It fit inside the campaign, and 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 we were doing what, you know, what we've traditionally done, which is, you know, you, you take an objective and then you move to the next right. objective, and the team really felt like, you know. That wasn't that wasn't a, that right, wasn't yeah. actually it was it wasn't enough yeah. just to switch between the the different players, yeah. and and I, I remember coming in one day and and then saying, "Have you seen the RTS element?" And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> "Okay, you know, it's yeah. like you know you're a Treyarch." So um, you know, it's kind of like I remember a few different days like that, like the day they told me to sit down and play the zombies mode right. um, <laughs> inside of the World War II game that we were making. Right. So uh, you know, um, you know, the guys. The, well, that's, the, that's iterative, right? I mean, people absolutely. are just building on it and having. And you, the good thing is, you guys have a couple of years to yeah. work on this stuff and build on these ideas. But was there a point where this game? wasn't in the future? I mean, was it ever a situation where it's like, ah, it's like, I, I don't know about these robo dogs. It's in some like, other buildings, I think there was some, there was a point where this game was not in the future. In this building, right. from the very beginning, um, yeah. you know, we knew we wanted to go in the future. I remember talking uh, to Dan uh, before, you know, after we'd submitted Black Ops and we were talking a little bit about what we wanted to do with the next game and, and he really wanted to have some great new gameplay for, for multiplayer and and was right. passionate about you know wanting to unleash the weapons team on some future tech and introduce yeah. that and how cool that would be inside a game. But we also wanted to create a sequel, and so I think right. we bounced, we we struck a really nice balance with being able to tell that story and being able to carry over those characters that you grew attached to in the first Black Ops, um, and and using Raul Menendez as our villain as that thread that's gonna that's gonna was help us tell that a, story. Was there ever a point though there where you said, hey, let's do it all in the future, like? Don't worry about the you know the '80s and all that. We definitely talked about that, yeah. but but as you know, all especially at the beginning of a project, all options are on the table. And in fact, that is the decision that was made right. in multiplayer was yeah. it's all 2025. So it yeah. really is, and, and each team you know has it you know has that creative freedom to be able to do that. Just because we were investing a lot in zombies, Jimmy. <laughs> oh man, how do I answer that? Um, <laughs> There is a date for zombies. Okay. It has a timeline. Yes, yes, it does. Wow. Yeah, no, zombies. They, they really are. You know, they 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 have. They obviously we have a core, and 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 do people do get to work on on some of the different modes. But each of the right. core teams have their own vision for what they're creating. Yeah. Uh, and so well, one of the first things Anim prototyped was actually the robot kind of thing that you would control, and that was. Right. I want to say we were still doing DLC stuff on Black Ops. Right. And so here they were prototyping a future element. That I mean, that's what's part, part of what was fun, I'm sure, Dan, for the weapons team and everyone is to just sort of say, hey, you know, the, the shackles are off. Now we can yeah, invent yeah. stuff, but also keep it, you know, somewhat realistic, right? I think that's one of thing. Course. I think people were, if you first said, hey, they're going to go into the future, 
people would start getting worried. It's like, oh, it's going to be you know too futuristic, and it's going to be you know mechs walking around and lasers. Yeah. I mean, you wanted it rooted in reality, right? I, I love I love watching the emails about like and the discussions about like they would literally justify how every single piece of technology evolved right. to, that could that, <laughs> to it get could, to that point, right? It it's could just, actually be in 2025, and they'd have this justification of how there were a lot of evolves. early conversations <laughs> trying to define where the line was that you cross between plausible reality and right. science fiction. And I think that was probably one of the biggest challenges. Going to the future, nobody knows what the future is going to be. All you can yeah. say is, let's try to draw a line to the future based on what we're seeing right now. And um, everybody kind of derives whatever their own conclusion is out of drawing that line. So in the beginning, there was a lot of kind of, you know, talks amongst the team, just debates about how far is too far and what's, what's, uh, what's you know, what's believable, what's too safe. Yeah. Um, art, remember art direction. Mm -hmm. uh, getting the art direction right was really important because yeah. you could, mm -hmm. you could have the functionality of a particular weapon, but the way it's visualized, could feel like it was too, or the interface that you have uh, right, right. actually could feel like that might be not in the year 2025. It might be mm -hmm. a much further out. I remember you do, right. going through that with a number of weapons. Was right? it always 2025, or at one point was it like 2050? Or I mean, how do you sort of zero in on? That? Uh, I think we, we we were like a little more than a decade out. I think yeah. we we toyed around in between the year whatever 2020. Three, 2021, 2020, 2020, whatever, whatever. Right. Somewhere it was, it, but it was, it, it needed Margin to be error. just beyond <laughs> yeah. where everyone, because I think like, you know, five years out, seven years out, maybe even 10 years out, people started, but then when you go more than 10 years out, right. that's when it gets exciting for us because that's, yeah. when, all, that's yeah. when everyone starts coming in with their own ideas about what it is because it's a little further yeah. out than I think people from, you know, can see. I mean, if you look right. back 10 years and where, where technology has advanced in the last 10 years, it's, it's unbelievable and that, that rate of change is not going to change. All right, well, we'll be right back in a second with more on the single player campaign of Black Ops 2.